Hi. I need to record a vlog and I, I can't. I don't know if I want to talk about everything I'm dealing with. Um, it feels almost wrong, I guess. Oh god, there's something in my eye. Check, check. Alright, let's see how this goes. Welcome to whoever might be watching. This is Shabby Lou. 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 Okay. Me, 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 me. Just kidding. 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 Me, 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 me. 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 Me, me, I dealt with a lot of crap this weekend and probably last week. I don't know. I don't know. I had my stream anniversary, as you all know, and um, it was it was good. It was good, but um, my brain sabotaged it as usual. So it was like, um, you know, whatever. Um, I had a plan for a vlog. And, uh, I don't think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> no. It's like... Uh-oh. All of me wants to give up still. <laughs> I was hoping... I was hoping, uh, I would feel better. But I don't. <laughs> I, I don't like relying on other people. Uh... For my sustenance. And work isn't coming in. Snapchat cut me off again. Um, anyway, as I was saying, um, work isn't coming in, so I'm like, whatever. But I'm, I'm doing my best. People are like asking me, what are you doing now? I'm like, oh, I'm self-employed. And like, oh, is it working out for you? I'm like, no. No. <laughs> I can't make rent. I can't pay my phone bill. I can't pay my light bill. I can't pay my car payment for a shitty car that doesn't even work. Um, well, I mean, it works. It works. It doesn't have AC. I need $1,500 to get it to work again. And, um, I have car insurance. I can't pay for that either. So, you know, I can't pay for anything. I can't even pay for food. Yep. I can't even pay for food, but here we are. The same narrative again. Uh, so anyway, I guess I'll just talk about it. I don't know. Um, I let someone into my community that I thought was trustworthy for whatever reason. I guess I knew them a little bit, you know, uh, from another friend's community. And because of that person, I ended up in a really cool seeming community. Um, but... Then they started being very controlling with me in little tiny ways, like little little ways that kind of irked me, but I didn't say anything about it because I was like, maybe I'm being a bitch. Um, maybe I'm overreacting. I don't know. So I, I, you know, I just filed it in my little brain, you know, because that's what I do because I'm paranoid. Ever since Tam, I'm super paranoid. So I just like, I'm just going to file this way, whatever, maybe I'm overreacting. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm always like with everyone, everyone I meet, I'm like, we'll see. Let's, let's see where this goes. You know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I try not to judge people because I know I'm paranoid. Um, but I, I file every little incident away in my little brain and I'm like, hold on to this one. So, you know, after I hold on to that little tidbit of information, um, there's a lot of like casual, I don't even know if it's casual. I don't know. Little, little sexual things, you know, being said to me here and there on my stream, sometimes, uh, in private chats. Um, at least that's how it felt like voice chats. So I, I like, I can't even like, cause of my brain fog, I like, I'm dissociating. 
I don't remember all the details. I just remember the feeling, the general feeling of it. And it's like, which I don't know if it's like a bad thing or like a red flag. If like they only flirt with you when you're in a private voice chat or something weird like that. You know, the reason I got into private voice chats was like, they were supposedly, you know, there to help me because they kind of bullied me into making them my mod. Because um, I was like, no, you can be VIP because, you know, because of you, I met all these cool people. Um, I'll just mod you or VIP you. And they were like, no, I don't like VIP. I have to have mob, mod view because I'm uncomfortable with, you know, Twitch unless I'm a mod. And I was like, Okay, fine. I'll, I'll mod you. Um, I don't like modding people just like that. It just, it doesn't make me comfortable. But I, you know, I started fawning. I, I didn't want them to be angry. I didn't want them to be unhappy. I wanted them to be comfy. Um, so, you know, I, I like, I had modded them for an event. And I was like, well, yeah. as I was saying, I had modded them for an event. So I thought, oh, they'll be helpful. Um, you know, I see them shouting people out automatically as soon as people come in to other um other streams in, in the you know community the general community so i thought you know they'd do that for me too and it would be easy um when my main mod joe um was too you know ill or having stuff going on or asleep because she's like seven hours ahead of me um i i thought it, it'd be nice to have a helping hand Someone who knows what they're doing, you know, like I do, um, like my friend, Mo, my friend Joe does, you know, I thought, it, I thought it would be nice. So I was like, oh, why not? So I start to notice a pattern and I just think it's, again, all in my head because, because I am who I am. <laughs> you know, I've lived through what I've lived through. Um, but yeah, you know, I start to notice they're never really in my streams. Um, if they, if they are seemingly in my streams, they, um. They, they just, you know, flirt with me or whatever, and I thought it was a joke. I, I really thought it was a joke. I, I, you know, I don't, I know I'm not super attractive. I am old, you know, I'm 39, I'm, I'm overweight, you know. Um, I, I try to get good angles like this one, you know, but I know people can see the reality. <laughs> yeah, I, I get the good angles for, for myself, just so I'm more comfortable. Um, so, you know, I think nothing of it, um, nothing of the weird flirting, and I think it was a joke, um, but then, I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't, do I want to get into this? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I mentioned this, I know I was upset about my five years coming up for a streaming anniversary, you know, I've been doing this five years now. Um, I was upset for various reasons. I'm mostly upset because I never eat anymore and my brain's running on survival mode. Um, people don't realize how much that affects the chemical output of my brain. Um, but it really does. It really does. Um, trauma changes the shape of your brain. <laughs> so anyway, um, I've been scared to look at the fridge. I, I feel like I've said this a million times, but just in case it's all in my head again, I wanted to say it. So, you know, um, I had the stream anniversary. It was a very successful stream for the most part. You know, I had people talking the whole time. That's the most I could ever ask. Um, I had fun doing my music. I, I felt really disconnected from my music just because I'm pretty sure I've been dissociating. Again, you know, I was probably dissociating during the stream. Um, I thought someone that said they would be there wasn't there at all. And they they probably may, maybe, I don't know, they claimed they were lurking the whole time um, after, after the fact. But, you know, it kind of bummed me out because it just reminded me of other people who would promise to do things and then they wouldn't do things. Um, Tam in particular. For various reasons, uh, since last Wednesday, um, today, today, by the way, is Friday the 24th, so, so reference. So about 10 days-ish, I've had to rehash my own trauma, um, particularly the TAM trauma, um, and a couple of different situations and 
I've had friends going through things that are making them unhappy, severely unhappy, and um, it's all, it's making me have emotional flashbacks. I'm not talking about it because I, all my friends who I would talk about it have been busy, and uh, I, I tried to be strong or tried to wish I was growing and uh, scheduled therapy like 10 days out instead of the usual week out. So I was like, things are going well. I'm doing, I'm doing, I, I thought I was doing great because the Thursday, um, whatever freaking day it was. The, oh yeah, the 16th. It was the day right before, it was the day right before the stream anniversary. I was doing stupendous, you know? I was doing really amazing. I woke up feeling so good <laughs> that day because I redid my whole stream setup and I was proud of myself for for once. I, I think my therapist hates me saying for once, but you know, that's how it feels. That's how it feels, so I'm going to say it right now. I'm sorry, Sarah. But anyway, <laughs> she won't see this. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't think she watches these unless I send them to her. Um, ethically, I don't think she's allowed to. Um, she's not allowed to subscribe. She'd get me to 100. Okay, I digress. So, that Thursday, the 16th, I was like 10 out of 10. First time, probably ever. First time, probably ever. 10 out of 10 feeling. I got my shit done. I was proud of myself. It's like, oh, I'm doing the thing, I'm doing the thing, and everything's going to be alright, even if I can't eat right now. Even if right now I don't know what a rent's going to come from. It's okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Everything's going to be great. I was hopeful. I was joyful. I was excited. I was happy for myself. I was loving myself. I had self-compassion. I was like, oh, we're doing great. We're going to wait 10 days for therapy. Friday, I wake up kind of like, eh. <laughs> kind of like. Shut up, tablet. People at my door. Probably my neighbor being toxic. <laughs> I think it was Friday anyway. I don't quite remember. And this is why I look at you know my chat history and stuff because I'm like, where was I when this was happening? You know, my, my, my little apps, they keep track of the days for me. The days and the time for me because I sometimes don't know where I am. <sighs> My right hand is getting tired, you guys, and it's harder with my left hand, but I'm going to try. So anyway, Friday, I wake up kind of starting to come back down from whatever high I was in. I don't remember what happened during the day. I wanted to prep for my stream. I feel like I kept getting pulled away by other things, probably side hustle stuff, to be honest. Um, and I was like, whatever, uh, I'll just do what I do. Um, I think I lost track of time at some point, got really anxious, forgot to eat because I was working. I got excited about something. And, um, yeah, but I, by the time stream came by, I was already kind of low, super low. Um, just expecting, um, things to go not, not great. <laughs> Not great. Oh yeah, because uh, a huge streamer compared to me in the community was streaming and I was like, okay, so that person's going to take any views I would have had, whatever. Um, in the back of my mind, you know, this person I had modded <laughs> way, way back in my mind, I felt like they had planned it somehow. And I hate that feeling. I don't, I don't like thinking that way. I don't like feeling that way. I was like, ah, oh, Savvy, you're an asshole. Like, I, I thought, why would they plan that? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> they, they probably wouldn't. They probably wouldn't. You know, I'm not that important to anyone, so <laughs> why would anyone <laughs> sabotage my life? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm paranoid, like I said. So, anyway, um, the stream happened. People came by. That was great. Um, people were really nice. They enjoyed my music. Really good. Um, but my brain starts ruminating on the fact that, you know, um, most people who are celebrating their birthdays or, you know, milestones, they, their community throws stuff at them, you know, like, oh, they throw bits and gift subs and donations or tips, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> How do you drink water? So anyway, I'm feeling bad that I'm like thinking people are trying to sabotage me 
because I'm like, why the hell am I thinking that way? <laughs> I'm not this kind of person. I don't think that way usually. Um, but um, ever since what happened to me, uh, little things like that creep in. And it's not like I, I focus on it. It's not like I want to. It's just my body remembering shit. Real shit that happened to me. Um, so anyway, uh, after the stream, I was pretty, pretty low. Um, again, I thought someone lied to me and I'm used to it, you know? So I was like, whatever they, they said this was important to them and kind of made me feel good and whatever. And then I'm like, maybe I'm like, maybe I'm trusting people. I shouldn't, I, I always have that feeling. So after stream, I'm kind of just bummed cause I'm like, you know, uh, I'm trusting people I shouldn't trust probably. And, um, I, I was joking around on the stream, you know, because I'm, I'm demisexual, or anyone doesn't know by now, where have you been, or you're new. <laughs> Thank you. If you're new, please like and subscribe. <laughs> but anyway, I'm demisexual, so I'm like falling for friends, right? And um, I was joking about that on stream for whatever reason. It was on my mind. And uh, uh, I know where the reasons, but I'm not going to share. <laughs> um... Well, it's between me and me. <laughs> but anyway, during the stream, I was joking about it, you know, saying, um, I don't remember what brought it up. Someone, something, maybe I was talking about my songs, um, because for whatever reason, I wanted to focus on love songs instead of my sad songs. Maybe because I knew it would, like, just throw me over the edge. Maybe that's why I felt disconnected. That's why I assumed I felt disconnected while I was streaming, because I was like, oh, I don't, I'm not really feeling these songs, but... They're the ones that are safe right now. <laughs> Last thing I wanted was to have a breakdown during my like anniversary stream, you know, because I felt it, I felt it edging in like, hello, I'm here to ruin your day, <laughs> you know? So, uh, I did love songs and I think that's what brought it up, but I was joking about it, right? I was joking and I was like, you know, if anyone ever really likes me, they should just, you know, um, can't come at me directly, you know, because I'm oblivious. I'm oblivious. I assume that no one wants me. Again, even even if people flirt with me, I assume they're just joking. That's if I'm even, like, conscious enough to, like, notice it's flirting. Um, I never assume it's flirting. I just, I'm like, oh, you're being sexual, of course. Uh, it's a joke. It's a joke, right? Why? 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 You know, um, maybe, I don't even know how I would expect to be courted if someone would actually court me. Um, ideally, I'd be like, oh, we're friends, and then all of a sudden they're like, you know, after years, and I'm like pining after them secretly, but being a friend, because I'm a friend. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh, Sabi, I see you in a whole new light. Or, I've, I've always, I've always thought you were amazing, but I didn't realize how our lives could align. I don't know, the stupid stuff that kids think, you know, the little dreams that I used to write stories about. Anyway, so, um, you know, that happened. Um, joking on stream about, I'm Demi, if you like me, you're gonna come at me directly. You better come at me directly or, you know, whatever. Like, and I'm joking about it because I thought it would be entertaining. I thought, you know, it was easy for me to, like, deflect how I'm feeling in general about myself, um, that day, and I, I just thought, it'd be fun, it's cute, people like these kind of topics, you know, whatever, um, I didn't really want to talk about it, I didn't want to be serious, it wasn't Monday Mingle, it was a music stream, so I'm not serious about any of that, um, I'm not expecting anyone in a chat to, like, have those feelings for me, you know? Um, I don't expect anyone to have those feelings for me. Anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, I think even on my, even, even my 10 out of 10 day, I'm like, yeah, it's not, I'm not anyone's radar. I'm not on anyone's radar. It's fine. It's okay. So anyway, all that to say, all that to say, all of a sudden this person I've been telling you about, you know, the person that, um, kind of bullied me into modding them, um, passively bullied me into modding them. Um, all of a sudden they're like calling me pet names in my DMs and they're like, Hey, how are you doing? And 
Like, I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, but I was kind of bummed and all my friends weren't talking to me. You know, my, my anchor friends, you know, that, um, would usually, usually be there to bail me out of a tough situation, a sad situation, um, or at least listen to me. Because for me, it's number one. Just listen to me and then I'll feel better. Um, I get out of my head. I get anchored down. I get more present. That's the help I need. I never ask for help. But that's what I need, mostly. I think. I think, you know. So I'm still operating under the assumption that this person cares about me as a human being, sees me as a friend in some sort of capacity, you know, whatever. So I thought it was weird when they somewhat started flirting, but it was weird. Um, but it, the whole night, um, you know, I try to talk about stuff and then they start saying, um, you know, all women are shit or something. All women are trash, something like that. All women are X, Y, Z, whatever bad thing, uh, this person was saying, uh, they kept saying it, you know, whatever bad word it was like, all women are, you know, this shitty cunts. Uh, I don't know trash. It was something like that. It was something like that again and again. And they're saying it and I'm like, and they're passively flirting in between saying it like while I'm trying to like vent with them. Cause I, I, sorry, Snapchat cutting me off. So I, the whole time I thought that they wanted to hop in a voice chat because I was bummed and they wanted to talk. And they said, they said they were depressed. You know, they said they were down. So I thought, you know, it helps me a lot sometimes too to help other people. So I wanted to listen, you know, whatever. And they then they start, you know, bitching about everyone that they mod for, um, saying that, you know, they all can't do anything, you know, they're inept without him and all this other stuff. And I, I, I mean, this isn't the first time I hear it. Um, I instantly start fawning and I, I didn't realize that at the time. I didn't realize this until maybe sometime Saturday, right? But this is Friday night, just to remind you. This Friday night. So, um, I don't, I don't even know if I realized I was fawning until maybe, anyway, the point is, the point is, um, they start, you know, this usual spiel that I've heard from them, you know, um, yeah, like, if it wasn't for me, uh, you know, this these people wouldn't be able to do anything. I set up everything for them, and da-da-da, and being very general. Being very, very general about all of it, you know, and whatever. And, um, not naming names, but, like, I, I like, it made me feel bad, because I'm like, these are my friends, and you're telling me that they're, like, children who can't control themselves like that that's the general feel that um he would give me about the, his opinion on that as i mentioned it's not even the first time he's talked about them this way um but you know he talks about them like they're irresponsible like they do stupid shit and he's just fathering all of them like um uh, you know oh they get drunk and i have to shut down the stream or um, they pass out and I have to rate them out so that, you know, they don't get whatever, X, Y, Z, um, uh, stuff like, I don't know, like, I, I tr teach them how to do everything, but they, they still don't, they still can't do anything and blah, blah, blah. And like, it, we casually started talking about the times he tried to control me. I didn't use that word with him. Some part of me knew it wouldn't be safe to, to, to say that, but it reminded me of this person always trying to make me make them an editor so that they could read me out. I don't need anyone to read me out. I've fucking been doing this five years. I, even without any mods on my stream for like, until Joe, I never had a mod in every single stream. I had a mod in some streams, you know, every other stream. You know, because people have lives, <laughs> um, and I don't have a consistent audience in general. Um, but Joe, Joe's pretty consistent. She's the first time I've had a mod on on board, um, almost every single stream, like ninety nine point nine 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 repeated percent of streams. She's 
So anyway, um, they, you know, tried to force me to make them an editor. They tried to force me to make them, um, an admin to my, um, to my discord server, which I didn't feel comfortable with because I have very personal things that I have in some channels that are for me to remember things. Again, I have brain fog. I dissociate, so I don't remember what's going on, where it's going on, so it's kind of like a journal. It's kind of like, it, it has a bunch of things I sent to Tam that um, I just needed somewhere. Um, a lot of times I would write a letter to Tam just for my benefit, and I wouldn't send it. Sometimes I would, but then I would delete it. But I, I, I have stuff like that that is very triggering um, reminds me of everything I've been through, but I leave it there because sometimes I need to anchor myself down. And so I remember when they tried to force me to mod them, uh, or admin them for the discord server, it was like some ridiculous excuse. I was playing around with the roles on my server because I wanted to try to make the rules channel look really cute and, um, just have people come in with a role that's super limited and then take off the role. And then when they would get the role off, then, um, you know, they'd be able to see everything and just free, be free to be free, you know? And it wasn't working. Every time I did the, um, like look at server as a thing, like certain roles were like seeing everything that they shouldn't be seeing. And then like including like mod stuff or back, you know, my, my admin stuff or whatever, you know, and like it started giving me a panic attack because I was like, shit, have I like exposed like my deepest dream? Anyway, I felt like, holy shit, I've, I've like exposed my deepest secrets to people that made me feel very, very unsafe because of Michael, who used everything that he ever learned about me, used it against me to like torture me <laughs> for four years. Um, it, I instant panic. So I asked for help to go through all the sections and see, I needed someone who wasn't an admin to be able to look at the server and tell me what permissions they had, what they could see, what they could do, what they could post. Cause I wanted, I wanted the general channels to be, you know, general. <laughs> I wanted them to be able to be used. So anyway, I knew that like I had established, I was probably safe, you know, um, like my stuff that made me feel safe was safe, I thought. Um, but I reached out to this person um, to have them help me go through all the channels, you know, and just be like, oh, yeah, I can see this. I can't see this. I can type here. I can't type here. Um, and I think my mods can see who has what role, you know, so I just needed help from someone. It didn't even have to be a mod. Um, I just knew this person was always around, um, because they always say that and I've seen it happen. So that's why I reached out to them versus one of my other friends who were working or, you know, who was around sleeping, you know, like, like my usual revivals were busy. So I reached out to this person who is always there, always saying they, they can help anyone. So instead of letting me, you know, do my thing and just helping me like a mod should, you know, helping you, not doing shit for you, because I don't want anyone doing shit for me. I'm my own person. I'm not stupid. I know how to do my own shit. I just wanted help. I need a second set of eyes, go through everything, you know, um, and then it reminded me of other times that they were very controlling. It was like, if I didn't do shit the way they wanted to, they would tell me shit passive aggressive shit like well I'm trying to help you but you're not letting me or well I'm trying to do what I know how to do but blah 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 and it was that all over again but while I was fearing feeling very unsafe and I just you know I started feeling like I should just trash the whole server or just say fuck it and they they were making me feel like I fucked up like the even the setup like I'm stupid like I've been doing this five years I'm not stupid. I know what I'm doing. I just need one thing of help because Discord was, you know, acting up. My brain fog makes it a little bit harder to deal with things. My anxiety makes it harder to, when I'm confused and having brain fog, to feel okay about it. 
um, I was gaslit by my brother and my father um, to make me believe that I don't know anything about computers, but I know a lot about computers. Um, so that's why I needed a second set of eyes to keep me grounded, um, just to help me through it. But once again, instead of helping, they just wanted to take over. They just wanted to do everything and do it their way. And I'm like, no, it's my fucking server. I do it my way, whatever. Um, so I just, you know, we ended up in a general chat instead of like the private chat, which I didn't feel comfortable talking about my stuff and my server in the middle of a, someone else's server and with other people coming in and out and, you know, whatever. I don't know what his plan was for that. I don't know if he was trying to disorient me. I don't know. It was very weird, very annoying. I just fawned and like followed along and I was like, sure, whatever. Sure, whatever. I just wanted to leave and thankfully um, something came up that was a good enough excuse for me to like save myself. So anyway, back to Saturday night, right? This Or Friday night, sorry. Back to Friday night after the stream. Um, little things they did was reminding me of that situation and you know, how almost every single time I asked for help, um, because they had offered it and I was trying to self-advocate and actually ask for help. Um, every time I would, they would just try to take over the whole thing. And then, um, all Friday night, I opened up more than I felt comfortable. Um, but I, I desperately just wanted someone to talk to because I, I, w I knew I was getting like close to, um, struggling with suicidal ideation the whole night. That sort of thing. So I just, I didn't want to be alone. So that happened. I fell asleep in the voice chat with the person. Um, and I don't remember why. I just felt compelled to like make a cute little story about it. Like, oh, when this happens. <laughs> and I tagged the person. And then um, a mutual friend that like, I haven't been really close to her or anything. Um, a mutual friend reached out and she said, be careful with him. Um, and I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> you know? Um, and then they told me, you know, basically different stories that kind of like <laughs> were exactly like mine, but, uh, you know, with different people. So then at that point, I started remembering way, way, way back, like months ago, maybe, I don't know. It was right after I got laid off and I was joking about how, um, I mean, there, there's truth to this. I make lewd drawings sometimes and I have thought about selling them. I have thought about making an OnlyFans for them. Um, I think I made like a goofy little Snapchat video joking about it months ago way way like probably a year ago almost it, yeah it was like last june july around then so anyway some of you know some of you don't that i draw little you know lewd things <laughs> and um i was joking about like only fans and um commissions in a in a friend's stream because like i was like oh i don't want to talk about it because i don't want to self-promote and they were like no no go ahead and do it so you know i'm joking about it and um you know, my friend who was streaming, um, they start joking, like saying, oh, well, you know, if you want to send me, you know, whatever, joking as if I was talking about nudes for my, like, selling nudes of myself, which I would never do that, probably. And yeah, no, I know. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not against it. If other people do it, they do it. I just, I don't know why I, I, I don't feel comfortable thinking about it. I, I don't feel comfortable with it. But anyway, that's not the point. So anyway, they're joking and I'm like, no, I mean drawings, you know, um, and I think most of me was jokingly like insinuating it just so people could like, <laughs> you know, joke back and actually ask what I was talking about. Um, but I was talking about, you know, little drawings or whatever. So this person, this person I modded, um, that I told you about, he starts, um, pushing me in the, in the chat, like saying, Oh, I, I should get a discount. Do you ever get a discount for a friend? And kind of like, I could tell they were implying that they wanted, you know, free stuff or whatever. And like, I had already um, posted in the server that we're all in 
um, I'd already posted like my my drawings. I don't remember why, but it was one of my it was one of my drawings that I had at some point thought about you know selling um, one of my little lewd drawings, and I was like, well, there's always already an example in the in the Discord, blah blah blah. But this person kept insisting as if I was talking about taking photos of myself, you know, and sending photos of myself. Um, when I was just talking about drawings, I was talking about drawings. So my friend who reached out to me on Saturday kind of reminded me of that situation, as I said. And then at that point, I start looking over, like in my head, I start looking over the conversation. I realized how sexual it was always off and on and how uncomfortable it made me feel. And I never said anything because uh, one, I thought it was a joke. Two, I'm pretty sure I was fawning. Just like, don't say anything because I could sense this person would just get angry or tell me I'm trash the way he was telling me again and again that I'm trash, but saying all women are trash. You know, I'm a woman. Just in case you didn't know, I have breasts and a vagina and I'm cis. You know, I identify as a woman. <laughs> um, just in case you didn't notice. I know sometimes I look like a guy. It, it is what it is. I'm a tomboy. But... I'm a woman. So, you know, uh, I noticed the pattern. Um, I finally like sat down and was like, you know what? <laughs> Cause I had rehashed, um, my trauma from a narcissistic abusive relationship, um, with another a situation recently that was going on, was actively going on with someone I, I know. Um, I just, I was fresh out of, um, rehashing all that stuff and somewhat like wondering if like, Every time I have a new person in my life, I kind of just wonder, like, are you covertly evil? Like, 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 like Michael was? Um, that asshole Michael? Are, are you evil? <laughs> um, so I'm always, like, kind of, like, <sighs> gleaming my brain and my situations to think about that. But with this mod person, I had never really sat and t thought about it because I guess... They seem really passive, they seem really like, just not, not in my face, they didn't seem to like be particularly attached, they seemed like really nonchalant and like they didn't really care if I lived or died kind of thing. I was fine with it because I wasn't really super attached to them. But um, anyway, after my conversation with my friend about, you know, other people going through the same thing or worse um, and then getting like discarded. <laughs> I started thinking about the whole, the whole friendship, that I, what I thought was a friendship, you know, and I was like, oh, this person probably isn't safe. And I think anyone else watching this um, who is part of this community, you know the rest, um, but it kind of blew up. It blew up because I think my friend made a semi-private post um, venting about it, and then I found out about it, and then... Everyone else found out about it, and then, yeah, things blew up. Um, <laughs> pure chaos, you guys, pure chaos. So my whole weekend went to this stuff, and um, I don't know why my camera's being. Damn it, I just burped, and I didn't get to say Davy's name, because I wasn't recording. I need to eat breakfast. Anyway, um, so that kind of consumed half my weekend. And I, I don't know why I'm talking about it. I, a lot of me feels like I wouldn't have been safe rehashing it all again because I just finished rehashing other things with another friend, you know. Um, so I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to talk about it. But now, now I'm like in block mode. I am telling you all about it, and I'm sorry if anyone thinks it's toxic. I just need to talk about it because I'm fucking tired of not talking about it. I don't have therapy till Monday, and I'm on my wit's end about everything in my life right now. So, um, yeah, that was most of my weekend, and then Sunday, <laughs> I thought I thought everything was going to chill out, you know? Um, but I had also fawned and agreed to play... Oh, wait. I, I skipped a whole, I skipped a whole thing. Um, rewind. We're rewinding. Um, Saturday, I woke up with 10 out of 10 pain. Not even 10 out of 10. It was 11 out of 10 pain. I have a major, major migraine. 
Um, I felt like I was going to throw up any minute. I could not get out of bed. I could barely, barely make myself food to, like, choke down (laughs) painkillers, ibuprofen. Um, But yeah, definitely could not get out of bed. I I felt like shit. Um, But this person started DMing me bright and early. um, And they kept insisting that we do stuff. And, you know, I was all like, I was trying to, like, kindly say, fuck off, I don't feel good. Uh, So, yeah, I was trying to, like, just gently say, like, hey, I'm not feeling well. You know, because I told them first off I wasn't feeling well. Um, And then they kept talking. And I was like, okay, I guess you're lonely, like you had implied the night before. Um, In the back of my mind, remembering this conversation with my friend. Um, about, you know, be careful with him and everything. And I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm, it's all starting to align. But uh, mostly I was feeling like hell and I didn't want to talk to anyone except for my very, very close friends who, you know, would understand or don't overwhelm me or, you know, respect my boundaries. (laughs) So um, I was also, you know, still depressed from the night before for various reasons. And, um, like, a few things, like, I I had a few messages that kind of cheered me up, but, anyway, this person kept, you know, talking to me, and, you know, they were like, oh, uh, do you have Steam? And I was like, yeah, and they had already added me on Steam, which that reminds me I need to do something with that. But anyway, they already on Steam, and they were trying to, like, game with me. I don't have any games. I'm poor, okay? I I don't buy games. My computer can't handle a lot of games, so there's no reason for me to invest in all the games I would want to play, and even if I wanted to play, I don't have time or energy to play a lot of games. Um, when I game, it's stream-related, and that's it. Um, you know, sometimes, very, very rarely, it's for, you know, Sometimes, like I was saying, very, very rarely it's for me to relax and just, you know, whatever. But usually what relaxes me is chilling on someone else's stream, doing art, listening to music, fucking off, sleeping, you know, or just sitting with my bunny and petting him because he's cute and comforting and quiet and doesn't ask anything of me except for his warmth. So anyway, uh, I tell a lot of people I'm a retired gamer. Why? My, my PC doesn't even have a dedicated video card. I was hoping to get one this year. I don't have a job, so fuck off with that. Um, <laughs> a lot of me thought I'd upgrade the PC, you know, so I could stream Switch um, and stuff like that. That didn't happen. Anyway, the whole point is I'm not super big on gaming. I like music. I'm, I, I do a podcast. That's all I have energy to do a lot of times and my own business. So, uh, you know, they keep insisting, um, and again, as I was trying to explain, I was trying to gently say, you know, leave me alone, (laughs) um, without saying leave me alone, because I didn't want to be rude, but again, I was also fawning, I was still fawning from the night before, and, um, uh, Yeah, I, at some point I was like, oh, you know, if I was feeling better, this is what I would do because I didn't want to, I didn't want them to make feel bad. You know, I didn't want them to feel like they're boring or whatever. I don't know. I didn't want them to feel bad about themselves. I never want anyone to feel bad about themselves because of what I say. Unless I legit decide they're evil, I'm like, I don't want you to feel bad because of shit I say. Uh, Because no one should, should feel bad about themselves. No. Um, so at one point, just to get them to leave me alone, I thought, I thought it would get them to leave me alone. Um, I was like, oh yeah, you should, um, maybe on Monday we'll stream a game together. You know, if you want, we can stream whatever, blah, blah, game. Um, cause they kept naming, asking me what games I had and whatever, and, you know, unwilling to buy me the game for, to have me hang out with them, but you know, whatever. Uh, it was, it was strange. So, um, I regretted ever saying, you know, we should game on Monday because I, I sure as hell just wanted to do music. I sure as hell didn't even know if I was going to be well enough to stream on Monday. Um, 
And I sure as hell didn't want to play the game that we decided on streaming together. But but I did it anyway. I said it anyway because that was my survival mechanism kicking in. And hell if I was aware that my survival mechanism was kicking in. Because I, I didn't consciously realize that I felt like I was in danger. And that happens often. And that's why I always feel unsafe. Because I'm like, how many times am I like ignoring things, ignoring very, very blatant wrong things that make me feel very, very unsafe just to survive like I'm used to doing um, for whatever amount of years, 39 years. So anyway, um, yeah, so that that was Saturday. Me just saying, hey, I'm sick. Hey, I'm sick. Leave me alone. But like gently, like. If I felt better, we could do this. Um, if I felt better, I I could do this. Um, hey, I'm trying to watch this because they kept, you know, dinging me. <laughs> you know, I was like, 11 out of 10 pain. Um, trying to hint to leave me the fuck alone. Um, they start flirting with me again. Um, sending me little gifts when I would make, like, just some random joke. Um, since they wouldn't fuck off and leave me alone. Um... You know, and like, I thought that, you know, a normal person, I think, you know, because I don't reject people usually because no one ever asked me out or flirts with me actively. Um, but it seemed, it seemed pretty active that morning. So I thought normal people, you know, can take a hint. You know, if you, if you send a sexually explicit kind of hint, <laughs> Um, or even a gentle hint, because he thinks whatever of me, he thinks I'm some little care bear, and he was like, let's cuddle, and, uh, you know, he was like, oh, I was trying to tell you to come cuddle, I'm like, what the fuck, I, I don't even like you, I barely know you, I, I told you I'm Demi, I'm fucking Demi, I'm like, fall for friends, and we're not friends, we're, you're someone who said that you wanted to mod for me, and then you don't mod for me, and then you don't even hang out. You don't fucking even know the name of my podcast. You don't fucking know what my podcast is, and you think we're friends? Like, what the fuck? So anyway, uh, it was so weird for me, because, like, I was like, uh, now I know you're actively coming at me, mostly because of, like, my, my conversation with my friend, and uh, I'm just, like, trying to hint, like, I'm not interested, I don't Again, I only fall for friends. He wasn't. He wasn't really a friend. He was. He wasn't a friend. Um, he was acquaintance. That you know, I, I wanted to be nice and say maybe someday we'll be friends. Uh, so I called him a friend because I thought they were friendly. And uh, whatever. Um, but you know, all most of Saturday until I I was like, oh, I've I've, I've got to go just go chill out. And I went offline and I felt bad because I was still talking to other people, you know, people I know are safe. Um, and then, you know, some side hustle stuff I was doing with that too and talking to them and actively trying to get some work done so I could it's actually actively trying to get some work done so I could, um, you know, <laughs> have a place to live in still. Um, you know, and I felt bad. I was like, oh, I just lied to this person, but I really just want them to leave me alone. Um, because I feel like shit and I didn't want to deal with people that I didn't want to deal with. I didn't want to deal with people that, um, I don't know that well, that don't know me that well, that I have to rehash my whole life just to let them understand why I don't want to talk. And I don't, I don't like doing that. Like I, can people just respect boundaries and like, if you tell them you're about to throw up from pain, leave you the fuck alone, you know, like. And yes, sometimes like some of my friends, I tell them I'm, I'm like in a lot of pain and we keep talking about stuff, but we're like talking about like actual stuff, you know, like, cause we've been friends for like a long time. We've had deep conversations. Um, it's people that have proven to me through their actions, uh, from respecting my boundaries that if at any time I needed to disengage from the conversation, they would let me disengage from the conversation. Those are the people that I keep talking to when I'm not feeling well. Those are the people that deserve my time when I'm not feeling well. Those are the people that deserve my time when they're not feeling well. You know, those are the type of people that I will cry for and, like, do everything in my power to help them feel better um, because they've earned it. 
because they respect me, because they honor me, because they help me honor myself, because they remind me that I'm important. Nonetheless, I still felt like an asshole for lying to him. <laughs> um, and then the next day happened. <laughs> and there was drama the whole day. Everyone finding out about everything. And, um, you know, a lot of people in a voice chat kind of like respecting me and um I don't even know if it was that Sunday it might have been Monday night I don't know it was at some point it was at some point I've lost three days to like dissociating so I'm not quite sure don't fact me fact check me on that timeline because I don't remember I don't remember right anyway the point is um I, I discussed a little bit in voice chats with people they believe me they believe me um, they didn't ask for screenshots. They didn't ask for anything. They just believe me because they know me and they trust me. And they were like, oh, you did this to Savvy? Fuck off. And then, then here was the cherry on top to that situation. Here was the cherry on top to that situation. Um, someone I thought cared about me a lot. Someone I did consider a friend. Someone I thought was like my actual friends who respect me and honor me and care about me. Um, they refused to talk to me directly about what was going on. Um, they talked to my mut our mutual friend. Um, they, they were freaking out because I was talking to my other friend who warned me about this person. Um, and they're like, oh, how they're talking to her. Da, 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 da. And I don't know why they were freaking out, but apparently they were freaking out and they couldn't just like, you know, directly talk to me. Oh, uh, fuck off with that. I'm not worth it. So, you know, that was going on and I was just like, okay, I thought you cared. I thought you trusted me. I th we had had deep conversations, you know, stuff like that. Um, I thought they were a friend. I thought they were a friend. Eventually, um, eventually, uh, I don't remember how or whatever, but they... They said something, and I finally told them directly what, what happened to me. And all they said were, well, he was never like that with me. Okay, future me, this is a trigger warning for the next two clips. Um, graphic. Graphic, because I'm pissed. Really? He wasn't like that with you. Okay. So who cares if, you know, he could have fucking, like, raped me, he could have fucking stolen from me. But if he didn't do it to you, who cares, right? Who cares? Didn't say, oh, I'm so sorry you went through that. Didn't say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened to you. Uh, I, you know, whatever. You know, to me, it said, I don't believe you. It said, I don't care if that happened to you. I don't care if that happened to you. Oh well, they didn't do it to me. So you know, if if someone stabs you, um, and you tell someone else, "Hey, this person stabbed me," well, he didn't stab me. <laughs> so you know, after this person that I thought was a friend, I thought a close friend, because they even fed me for a couple months. You know, one month. Um, but I thought they cared about my well-being. I thought they cared about. My survival. I thought they cared about my safety. Um, they just dismissed me. They didn't say sorry. They didn't say whatever. They think I'm stupid that I'm easily manipulated by someone who has not actively tried to manipulate me, who has been supportive, who called my other friend when I was suicidal and I like admitted to her that I was suicidal. You know, they, they think, you know, that I'm being manipulated by that person. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, that was the bulk of my Friday night till whatever Monday, maybe Tuesday. I don't know. I don't know. The other stuff happened. Um, mom tripped on some bunny proofing, um, Sunday. That, I know the day for sure because, you know, I kept, I keep telling people um, she hurt her wrist. She's okay. Um, her wrist is just like 
now it's a tiny bit bruised, um, very, very little swelling uh, this morning. It, it finally started bruising, um, minimal bruising, um, but she can't use her hand that well, so she needs extra help on top of the usual help she needs. Um, and then Tuesday, she called me. <laughs> Tuesday, um, you know, she got frustrated with me and called me stupid, and then I, I went full on breakdown, full on suicidal, not just suicidal ideation, suicidal. Um, I didn't want to exist anymore. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel worth existing right now. I'm struggling still a little bit. Um, I'm trying to self-advocate by making this, um, and also let you guys know what I've been going through. Um, uh, I was, um, in such a deep trauma response, I couldn't even talk for most of Tuesday, um, and people were blowing me up, um, you know, because of active drama that was still, you know, going on. Um, my friend just, like, very torn up by our mutual friend just kind of dismissing me, um, just kind of, like, not caring about what I went through at all. And, um, you know, I was barely functioning. Um, so Tuesday was rough. Tuesday was very rough. I lost a whole day. I lost a whole day. Um, and I don't know if I was just like extra sensitive because I haven't eaten well, um, since late February. It's about a month now. Um, I don't, I don't really have food in the apartment. I get little bits of food when the bunny needs greens because the bunny needs greens. Um, or if he needs hay because I need other stuff to order to get the hay without it being, you know, astronomical amounts of money. Um, I, you know, I still feel bad that I invested in myself and got a haircut. Um, I still feel bad that I invested in mom and got her hair dyed so that she wouldn't look in the mirror and say, I'm going to die soon still feel bad about that. Um, the moments I made those decisions, I told myself I was going to trust my community and that I, I was going to trust people who have told me that, um, homelessness is not an option for me because they're in my life, you know? So I went for it. I, I wanted to treat myself and treat mom and I still feel guilty about it now. I guess part of me maybe thinks I don't deserve to eat. Um, but mom does like uh, when I do eat it's because I know mom needs to eat um but it, it's I struggle I, I've always struggled with food in a weird way um when I get depressed I don't even have an, an appetite um I don't know if that counts as an eating disorder I don't I don't know I don't know but it's it's a lot it's a lot I'm still scared of not being able to pay rent. Um, I'm scared of the money running out. Uh, I'm hoarding like little bits in my savings. I, I went to get an oil change and finally figure out what's wrong with the AC in the car yesterday. And I, I feel immensely bad about that. Um, even though my side hustle, um, helped me out like with the oil change. Uh, yeah. So, Anyway, that was Tuesday, and Wednesday, Wednesday I had my class with Zoe, um, I'll link her somewhere, <laughs> or, you know, I'll, like, put her picture here, or something, you know, I'll put her around here on the screen somewhere, she's awesome, Ugh, sorry, <laughs> I need to eat, she's awesome though, um, I've been doing her class, her free class for disabled entrepreneurs, and I highly recommend, highly recommend. Someone called me and it threw me off. I've tried to record this little bit a couple of times. Uh, anyway, um, Wednesday, Zoe's class was very awesome as usual, but I was very much in a place where I wanted to hide. I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to be heard. Um, so I was struggling a lot. And um, I just... Uh, I wanted to disappear and I hate that feeling. I hate that feeling 
so much. Now they left a voice message. Leave me alone. I'm busy. I'm trying to record a vlog. So anyway, usually I'm one of the most more active participants, but um, I felt guilty and ashamed every time I participated. Because um, I was like, who the fuck are you, Sammy? And like, I would, I would feel proud of myself for two seconds and then immediately dismiss myself in my head and just be like, no, you're not good at these things, you idiot. That, um, that was really hard. It was really hard to watch myself, you know, because I feel like my, my conscious self is like seeing my unconscious self be an asshole to me and it, it distresses me, you know, because I'm like, I don't deserve that. Um, I deserve love and kindness, just like anyone else I care about. And, uh, that was a struggle because it's usually such a great time and I was having a great time, but again, that self-sabotage was <laughs> seeking in, just seeping in, just like, hello, you're trash. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. And then it's like, yes, you are. So, um, I don't remember much about yesterday. Today's Friday? Oh my god, um, yeah, today's Friday. I thought it was Saturday. <laughs> oh my god. So, yesterday I got that oil change that I was telling you guys about. And I had a lot of cool conversations. Like, there was this, um, random little old lady that was at the car dealership where I went to get the oil change. Um... And she looked, she looked lonely for whatever reason. Um, and I, you know, I just started to like make small talk for whatever reason, just cause I, I felt compelled to talk to her. I don't know why. So, uh, when I made the appointment, um, for the oil change, I told them I need the, I need the little drop off service, you know? Um, and then when I got there, uh, they were all like, oh, he's not here. And I was like, what? So I started, I was just like, I used it as a talking point and um, started talking to this lady. She was so sweet. Um, and she just, you know, I, I, I don't know if I just sensed that she needed to talk to someone or what. But um, we just chatted for a little bit. And then I ordered an Uber and went home because I didn't want to, I didn't want mom alone at home. Um, and I, I had, I had shit to do. I had side hustle shit to do. I wanted to eat. I didn't get to eat, by the way. Um, I lost track of time. I need to eat more often. Um, anyway, I told myself I would eat so I wouldn't feel like shit. So anyway, the Uber guy on the way home, he was super, super sweet as well. And we had a great conversation. And it was just like... So it, it felt nice. It felt nice. I felt like me. And I was like, ah, oh, this is what the Savvy Lou Sounds brand is about, you know, bringing, bringing love and kindness in the world and, and just having nice conversations with people. And I was doing it, not on stream, but like, you know, with random people. And it made me happy. It made me happy for like a second. <laughs> so, you know, then I'm home. Uh, I have dinner with mom. Um, that was a semi-catastrophe because like the drinks that they gave us. Uh, I didn't want to buy food, but I was too tired to, to cook, as usual, this week. Um, it's too tired to cook, so anyway. Uh, the drinks they gave us fell apart. <laughs> fell apart. And uh, I, I probably said some stupid asshole shit that mom got upset about. Because she was upset the whole time we were eating dinner. And she just looked really, really sad. And I felt like a jerk. So, you know, that happened. And then... And then the night happened, and then some conversations made me feel very outside of myself and very, very worried about, you know, accepting evil people in my life again. <laughs> so I, I just started shutting down, and eventually I fell asleep. And here we are today. Here's my vlog. That was my last week. As I was saying, that was, um, you know, the last seven days. You know, that's, that's happened. You're caught up till right now at this moment, 10 51 AM Friday, the 24th Monday, 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 Monday. We have Mr. Twister from the JSN Juggalo streaming network and maybe fizzy. I'm really, really hoping for fizzy. 
Maybe Fizzy also joining us for Monday Mingle. We're starting season three. Season three of Monday Mingle. This was what the blog, vlog, whatever. This my original plan for this vlog was V celebrating Monday Mingle and everything that's happened, you know, the last two years with Monday Mingle. I was like, hey, we're going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to like post together little clips of little moments and whatever and be like, oh, here's how it started and here's where it is now. And, you know, I had planned to redo the whole stream setup again for Monday Mingle. I might still have time. So the last uh, probably 10 days of my life or so, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, um, have been pure chaos, more chaos than my usual chaos. I'm coping. Um, I have my very first, very first ever care package on its way right now to me, thanks to Fizzy. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to do an unboxing because I want to. And all it is is food, she said. But, um... Uh, yeah, I, that makes me happy. That makes me very happy. And, um, I can't wait th for therapy on Monday. <laughs> All of me, especially after last night, is like, am I trusting the people I should be trusting? I don't know. But, um, we'll find out, you know, we'll find out one day at a time, everything, everything, you know? And I'll get through it. We'll get through it. You know, whatever you deal with, whatever you're going through, you'll get through it. And it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're here in this together. If you're my friend, we're in this together. If you're not my friend and you're just covertly using me, then you can fuck off. But until you, um, you know, show your ass to me, <laughs> we're in this together. <laughs> and I'll do my best to be me. And unapologetic unapologetically be myself and the moments I can't be myself is when I feel very disgruntled and very afraid but it's okay even that we'll get through we'll get through it you know if you're a victim of my paranoia I'm so sorry um if I'm a victim of your assholiness I'm sorry for you because fuck off I deserve better you don't deserve me so I don't think I have haters but to, you know, people who try to abuse me in whatever way, toxic positivity especially, fuck off. Fuck off. I'm tired of it. I woke up angry yesterday because I don't want to pull up, put up with that. Um, my friends are hurting because of assholes and that makes me very mad. That makes me very mad and the more I think about it, it makes me mad for myself too, you know, because I deserve better. My friends definitely deserve better too. Yep. Mm -mm, not on my watch. Peace out. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'm sorry, this is so hateful.